So this is chapter eight, question number nine. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire question, but basically there are two firms and each firm is choosing a price. And the price, uh, the, the demand that firm I is going to get is basically the maximum of zero comma uh, 24 minus uh, 2pi uh, plus pj. Um, yes. Well, why do we have max? The idea is basically the following. You will never produce uh, negative quantities, right? I mean, you know, it, it makes no sense. So therefore, if this thing is negative, which is possible if PI is very high, for example, well, then you are actually going to produce zero units rather than negative unit. So the question is, both firms are choosing prices, P1 and P2, okay? Uh, by the way, this is a price competition uh, for differentiated goods. Uh, meaning these two firms are not selling exactly the same thing. And so, you know, charge, they don't really have to charge the same price. But you can think of firm one is producing Coca-Cola. The other firm is producing Pepsi. So they're not really exactly the same thing, but they're related. Meaning the price of good one. Uh, is going to affect the demand for good too and vice versa. Um, so both firms are choosing their prices simultaneously and independently. And we assume that the prices are coming from the range 0 to 20 for some reason. So they can't charge more than 20 and less than 0. So the question is, you know, uh, you know what is the profit function of... Uh, find that the prices less than six and prices greater than uh, 11 are best response. I'm sorry, it's strictly dominated. The rest are not, etc., etc. So how do we approach to this question? Oh, by the way, there's no marginal cost or no cost. So the profit is simple. Profit of firm I is actually uh, price times quantity, right? The revenue. So what is the price? Uh, price of good I, obviously, uh, or price of firm I times the quantity of firm I. Okay, as simple as this. Well, what is the quantity? Well, you don't really have to take this max form, all right? Uh, you just basically take this part and then later make sure that this part will never be negative, all right? So that means the profit is actually equal to PI times 24 minus 2PI plus PJ. So how do you maximize profit? I mean, I, wouldn't, I want to find the best response. So that means we actually find the profit maximizing profit given the other player's uh, price. I'm oh, sorry, a profit maximizing profit, did I say? I, uh, profit maximizing price of firm I given that the firm J is charging price PJ. So what is this partial derivative? Well, it's simple, it's 24 minus. This is gonna be 2pi squared. So if you take the derivative, it's gonna be 4pi uh, plus pj, all right? So it has to be equal to zero because this is the critical value. Well then, solve for pi, uh, 4pi equals 24 plus pj, divide both sides by four. So pi must be equal to six plus pj divided by four. Well, why do I keep writing ij? Well, simple. Here, actually, because the game is symmetric, the best response uh, for firm 1, given that firm 2 is charging P2, or we just simply write it as P1, is actually equal to this, 6 plus P2 divided by 4. And similarly, best response for the second uh, uh, firm given that the first firm's price is P1, is again six plus, but this time price of good one, divided by four, all right? So these are the best response functions. Well, what is next? Uh, we usually put them on P1 versus P2 graph, just to see what they look like. So let's call this is P1, this is P2. I know that they have to be in between zero and 20. All right, so outside of this box, uh, the strategies are not allowed. Uh, so here, let's draw the best response for the uh, first firm. 
So it's a function of P2, but when P2 is zero, which is the lowest price uh, this firm can pick, uh, the best response is six. So therefore it starts from six. Uh, well, let's call this 10 and six is somewhere here. So this is uh, the starting point. So when P2 is zero, P1 is gonna be, the best response strategy is gonna be six. And from there on, it's going to uh, uh, increase all the way up to, so be careful, so it's gonna increase something like this. Uh, well, my, my picture is, is not perfect because you have to be careful. So here, it's clearly going to, uh, you know, hit this 20 boundary when, meaning when P2, uh, I'm sorry, uh, when P2 is 20, What's going to be the best response for a player one? Well, when this P2 is 20, so this is 20 divided by four is five plus six, 11. So this is 11, all right? It doesn't look like 11, given that 10 is so close to it, but anyway. So this is six, this is 11. So this is the best response for firm one. Symmetrically, best response for firm two is, again, is gonna start, let's say this is 10, this is uh, six, this is 11, so it's gonna start from six and will go all the way up to 11. So something like this, I guess. So they're gonna intersect at some point. Uh, how do I find this intersection? Well, simple. Whenever you see P2, I'm sorry, uh, P1 here, uh, just, just plug this because remember this is P1. So put this thing into P1 and so this is, remember, P2 equals 6 plus 1 over 4 p1 which is 6 plus p2 over 4 and so if you solve this uh, I'm skipping this step you're going to see that p2 is equal to 8 all right and symmetrically p1 is going to be 8 so this is 8 oops and this is also 8 all right so that's it so these are the best responses well the question is show that the strategies less than six and strategies more than 11 are uh, dominated, strictly dominated. Well, how so? Well, simple. Let's focus on uh, player one. All right, so this is player one's best response. Uh, remember, the game is symmetric, so everything is going to uh, will be transferred to player two as well uh, because uh, the symmetric arguments will work for the second player. So the best response for the first firm is six plus P2 divided by four. So what was the lowest possible price for P2? So remember P2 is in between 0, 20. So that means this best response thing is in between right? So for zero, this thing is six. For 20, this thing is 11. So the best response of the first player is always in between six and 11. What does that mean? That means the strategy is less than six and the strat strategies for firm one that are less than six and the strategies for firm two, uh, firm one that are more than 11, they will never be best response. And hence, remember the uh, result we had, if a strategy in a two-player game, if a strategy is never a best response, it means it's a strictly dominated strategy. Hence, for that reason, uh, the strategies less than six, all right, S1, let's call it, and the strategies greater than 11, they are never best response simply because the best response has to be in this range. And so, dominate it. As simple as this. Okay? So the, uh, if you like, you can use the red, so indicating that those strategies are never best response and dominate it. Same for this guy, right? The second guy. So this is basically iteration number one. So in the first iteration, what do I have? The strategies for firm one, S1, let's call it, has to be coming from this range. But the symmetric argument means S2 is also in this range. 
So we don't have this anymore. Uh, by the way, here S1, S2, I mean actually P1, P2, because uh, this is the notation we used. So I'm sorry for using different notation. Let's, let's keep on the same notation, okay? So P1, P1. Uh, let's not change the notation in the middle of the uh, solution. So we don't have this restriction anymore. We realize that a rational firm one will never choose price less than six or price more than 11. And so the prices are actually coming in this range. Same for firm two. Well, now I can iterate one more step. How so? Well, once again, remember, this is how I started. Given that this is the best response of firm one, and given that the price of firm two has to be coming from this range, 611, well, the best response for firm one is actually going to be in this range. Let's calculate this range. Hmm, the lowest price is six, which corresponds to what price? Well, six divided by four, it's like three divided by two plus six, it's 15 divided by two, I guess. Well, uh, the highest price is 11. So it's 11 divided by four plus six. So it's 24, 11, 35 divided by four. I don't know what that equals to, but this is something like uh, slightly uh, less than nine. This is slightly, uh, this is, yeah, 7.5, okay? Well, so therefore, once again, P1 less than, this is step two. So P1 less than 15 over two and P1 greater than 35 over four. They are never best response after the first iteration. And so that means they are also dominated, meaning a rational firm one will never pick a price. Uh, outside of this range, 15 over two, 35 over four, and same here because of the symmetric arguments, 15 over two, 35 over four, etc. So, I mean, should I stop there? Well, actually, no, you can keep going. And if you keep going, uh, I'm not gonna mathematically prove it, but you know, you don't really have to, you'll see this number is gonna get closer and closer to eight, this number will also get closer and closer to eight. So this point is eventually going to be the only rationalizable strategy of this game. Okay?